Peter, welcome to Serbia. Thank you. Uh, tell us how do you feel about uh, the new distribution and your plans with the Serbian market? Well, Serbian market is a small market like many other markets we work in, and therefore, you know, we take it nice and easy, no pressure, no, no pushing. We, the, my plan has always been that we go to shows and we, you know, we just play music. We basically base our entire strategy on the fact that we make equipment that sounds different from everybody else's. Um, and that, that strategy is, is, uh, is most effective when we can go to a show and we can just stand there and play music. And therefore, you know, we like shows that are one, not too crowded, and two, where the rooms are not made out of uh, cardboard. And okay, this is not perfect here, but it's certainly uh, the room. Uh, the rooms are, are fairly well, uh, fairly strong, so you cannot hear too much uh, between the rooms. And uh, you know, the show is nice and small. So far off, this works fine. Mm -hmm. And I, there is no when I go into a market, there's no sort of plan to what we're going to do. We look at the market, we look at the distributor, we work with the distributor. And uh, try and support him as much as possible. And uh, it's a learning process. This is what we do is so different from the, what the rest of the industry believes is the correct way that this is almost like you have to take a, um, a rubber and erase the knowledge of the distributor and then start all over again with a clean sheet. Um, and that. You know, that is essentially what we do. We, we just wait and work with the distributor. And in some markets it's very quick, in some markets it takes a long time. And, you know, most of my distributors I work with for 15, 20, 22, 25 years in some cases. Uh, can you tell us more about your products, why are you so specific? What are the product ranges? That well, it's, really we don't start with a product range, we start with a philosophy. And the philosophy says the following. Accuracy, define, as the industry defines it, is not correct. Accuracy can only be defined by the recordings. It's not, accuracy is not a live event. Because you can't take a live event home and put it in your living room. A live event is always very interesting and there are lots of very nice live recordings. I have brought a lot of them with me here. But really what determines accuracy, in our opinion, is the fact that, and it relates to the recording and how the recording is made. Basically, we know nothing about the recording. The only thing we know with absolute certainty about every single recording that's ever been made is the fact that it must be different from all other recordings. And I'm not talking here about the music, I'm talking about the sound of the recording itself. Because we know this because it was done by different people with different equipment at a different time, with different musicians, in a different locality, or even in the same locality but with different people and different equipment. And therefore, these differences imprint themselves into the recording. The job of the equipment is to be as accurate to what is on the recording. And this doesn't matter whether it's a 78 or it's a CD or it's a LP or whatever it is, a tape. Those, those essential characteristics of the recording itself have to be present. From that follows that the equipment which differentiates the most between the recordings is better than equipment that doesn't. One of the interesting aspects of, of the recording formats is that if you compare an SACD with a CD and an LP of the same piece of music, of the same recording, as you go from the LP to the CD to the SACD, the differences disappear. The recording sounds more the same as all other recordings. So somewhere in that process, the SACD process loses something that's inherent in the, in the LP. And to me, that's a major problem. 
with, with that technology. It simply has a homogenizing effect on everything, including, of course, the performance and the way the instruments sound and so on. So we call this comparison by contrast. And what we are contrasting is one recording against another. And what it does is it makes it much easier to sit down and judge whether this technology or that tube or that speaker design or this whatever is capable of differentiating because you're not listening to reference recordings anymore. You can take 15 completely random records out of your collection and listen to those and they will tell you the truth if you listen for the right things regardless or whether you like the music or not, or whether you uh, whether you know it's a good or bad recording, or whoever the musician, whether the musicians can play or not, it's completely irrelevant. Because at the end of the day, the job of the equipment, the equipment doesn't know what you're putting on. All the equipment is doing is reacting to electrical signals, and therefore, because they they only uh, it's only electrical signals that we're acting to. It doesn't matter whether it's a, it's a live recording with Slipknot or it's a violin concerto. The, it should treat the recordings the same way and do an equally good job with both. And, and this is where, in, in my opinion, I have, n I have not heard any so-called high-end equipment that can do this to us, to, to, to to what I would consider to be a satisfactory degree. And that's a big problem. 